Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, which means it's time for your Tai Chi Master Skill Tip of the Week. And today I am going to show you how to overcome the most annoying error in Tai Chi. So if you want to know what that is and how to get past it, stick around. Hi everybody, it's David Dorian Ross and welcome to another episode of Learn Tai Chi at Home. It's day number 53 of 100 Days of Tai Chi, the video series where you're learning the traditional 103 movement Yang style long form. Now if this is your first time to this channel and you are a beginner who's looking to learn Tai Chi at home, then first of all, welcome. And the second thing is the, the easy way to get started is just to hit that subscribe button and then when the little bell icon pops up, hit that too so you never miss another episode. In today's lesson, we are continuing the series of movements called Parting the Wild Horse's Mane. Now we learned the first move of this, the first step, for the first in a series of three in yesterday's lesson. Today we're going to take a look at the next two. Also, it's early in the morning here. I wanted to capture this great light, so I'm trying not to talk too loudly or talk too much. So we're going to take another look at this in um, voiceover mode. So if you're ready, let's just jump into the lesson. Now, as we take a look at today's movement, parting the horse's mane, one of the things I want to do is point out the use of the Tai Chi lunge in this movement, what we call the bow and arrow step, or bow step for short. To just to review this really quickly, the Tai Chi lunge has the weight differentiated over the front foot and the back foot. So the front foot bears about 60% of the weight and the back foot bears about 40% of the weight. This lunge also has what we would call length and width. Length meaning the distance between the front toe and the back heel, which is approximately double your shoulder width, and that will change depending upon your flexibility and your strength and, your, and how much practice and experience you have. Then there is width, which is the distance we might say between ankle to bone to ankle bone. And in this position, in the bow step, this is about maybe one shoulder width or hip width. And the space in between here is what's known as the channel. And the bow step always creates a channel and that makes it different from other foot positions, for example, like the empty step in which there's no channel, right? Now, one of the things we haven't talked about is the fact that there's more than one kind of bow step. So in this routine so far, we've done a lot of this movement here, brush, knee, and push, or brush, knee, and a twisted step, right? I don't know, like a dozen, you know? So uh, the thing is that in this particular position, we are using a bow step known as aobu, that's what it is in Chinese, aobu, meaning the twisted step. And here the hips are completely squared off, right, 100%. But in part of horse's mane, we're using a different kind of bow step known as xuenbu, which means sort of open. And so in this position, I do not square off my hips entirely. I leave them open so that my pelvis points about 45 degrees off the line. So, when I'm doing my parting horse's mane, as I step out, I begin to turn the waist, but then my hips stop before they finish squaring off, although my head continues to turn until my, and my arm keeps on moving until it lines up over the front leg. Right? This makes it a very different position than brush knee. Can you see that? Two different kinds of bow steps depending on the technique involved. So first, let's take a look at all three part horse's main steps from the end of the single whip. Once again, here it is from the rear view.
let's take a look at the footwork alone. Now we're just gonna look at the two steps. So we've already done one part horse's main step. You sit back and empty out the front foot, turn the body 45 degrees as you step forward into the second bow step. Now watch this again, we're gonna do the same thing. Sit back, emptying out the front foot, sitting on the back leg. The waist turned towards the left, foot turns out 45 degrees. Now step through and into a new bow step straight down the lane. And that will complete three steps. Now to clearly see what the hands are doing, I put two views up here. Notice that the hands just float until you step up and then you hold the ball, step out, and then the hands separate as you come into the bow step. Watch this again. They float, then hold the ball, then it's like a tossing motion. The bottom hand from hip to shoulder level, the top hand pulling down by that waist. It's the waist turn that links the hands and the feet. The waist will turn to the left, really winding up to prepare for the step out. And then it's an unwinding of the waist. However, it doesn't unwind all the way, just three quarters of the way. So in the final position, it's still pointing to the corner. Today's Tai Chi Master's Skill Tip of the Week has to do with overcoming the most annoying error in Tai Chi, and that is having a bobble or a loss of balance on simple steps. So if I talk to my students and even in my own practice, uh, come up with this complaint or this, this frustration more than any other. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Now we've learned a movement today, Parting the Wild Horse's Mane, which is a series of continuous steps. And we've done Brush Knee, which is also a series of continuous steps. And we'll learn some others, which are also, you know, um, re repetitions of steps uh, in a row. And mostly bow step to bow step to bow step. And during that continuous series, we have to take this transition, right? And then step up in order to transfer weight to take the next step, right? Well, this is not a difficult step. This is a pretty easy step. You know, it's not that different from walking. But time and again, you get to this step right here, and there's the little wobble. There's the bobble. And it's so frustrating because it's like your brain says, this should be easy. And yet somehow it continues to come back and be, be challenging. Here, however, is the secret. Here is the master skill tip. When we walk normally, we don't have this problem because our hips are in agreement with our legs and our torso, right? We rarely, unless we're like walking through a crowded, you know, train station, they say, excuse me, let me get my hip through there while I walk forward. We don't walk like that. We point ourselves in a direction and walk straight forward, right? And so we never lose our balance. If you are doing this series of continuous steps, you also have to turn your hips in the same way. And yet most Tai Chi students forget this. Now look, in this position, my hips are not squared off towards my direction of step. And so I'm literally trying to walk sideways here to bring this foot up before stepping out. And in that case, that's a recipe for losing your balance. So here is the simple tip. After you make the first adjustment, sit back, turn the waist, turn the toe, turn the hips to square off, bring this foot up, then open out for your step on my side, just move back there a little bit so I stay in camera, right? Sit back, turn the waist, the foot turns, turn the hips to square up before taking that step. And this one tiny thing will overcome the most annoying error in Tai Chi. There you have it, there's your skill tip for the week. 
By now, many of you may have seen the video I put up yesterday um, that was the new channel trailer, the new sort of in invitation to people to know what this channel is all about and to subscribe to this channel. And one of the things I said in the channel trailer was how many different kinds of demonstrations and instructional videos there is now on this channel and that there will be because we're creating it in the future. And I already got a comment back saying that uh, someone would love to learn fan form from me. So I brought out my fan. There we go. I was thinking about maybe doing a little this morning. What my question of the day for you is, what would you like to learn on this channel? There's all kinds of things, you know, 40 years worth of traveling around the world, studying Tai Chi from different teachers and different masters, doing my own research. And uh, I've got a lot to share. If uh, you would tell me what it is that you'd like to learn, maybe we'll get a chance to do a series on it. And I'd love to know, because we could even put little snippets of it in some of the other videos. So that's my question for the day for you. If you would write your answer down in the comments section below, that would be awesome. As always, if you've got any questions about any of the movements or the routines or the background and history of Tai Chi, please just let me know about it and we'll answer it in these videos. Well, there you have it. One more lesson in the can. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today. And if you did, if you wouldn't mind maybe dropping down there and hitting that thumbs up like button, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Now, one more time, if this is your first time here and you are a beginner who wants to learn Tai Chi at home, or even if you're a more advanced student and what you're trying to find are some tips and insights and tricks and little nuances that you can add to what you're learning from your teacher, then all you have to do to get started is just hit that subscribe button. I'd love to work with you, so I hope to see you more. And last, but most importantly, thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to share my Tai Chi with you. I really appreciate that. Hope you have a wonderful, beautiful day wherever you might be. Be well, be wise, be wonderful, and I'll see you in the next lesson.